Hi, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for watching and for subscribing. And if you're just visiting, please consider subscribing. So today we're going to do part two of testing new and popular high top fragrances. Hopefully you watched part one. If you didn't, I'm going to link it somewhere up here. But as I mentioned in that video, I have been testing a lot of different fragrances. And so I had to split it up into two parts. In this part, mostly, except for one fragrance, I want to concentrate on two houses. Two houses that I have been interested in for quite some time. And I've just never had a chance to test any of their fragrances, any. And finally, I'm able to test their fragrances and I want to share my opinions with you. Now, the two houses that I'm talking about are Soradora, I know many of you love this house and rave about it, and House of Sillage. My God, I, I'm probably the last person to test fragrances from this house. I mean, it's been talked about and raved about and so many people love it and I have never tried anything. I think I've spoken about it on multiple occasions. So let's start with the house of Siage. Now, I got their sample kit of their signature collection. Now, as you know, my channel is purely based on honesty and I will disclose immediately that this was actually sent to me by the house of Siage. They contacted me, offered me, asked me if I wanted to test it. I've been curious about this house for a long time, which I voiced on this channel. And so I said, yes. Now, regardless of the fact that they sent it to me, you will get my honest opinion about what I think about these fragrances. In fact, I should mention, you know, I do get offers of PR, you know, quite often. And a lot of them, majority of them, I turn down. One of the things that I always mention to any company, A, there are no scripts. I will say what I want to say, what I feel about the fragrances, what I think about them. That's a must. And I will speak honestly. If I like them, I will say that. And if I don't, I will say that. And, you know, uh, I was... I was really happy that when I told them that, them that they had absolutely no issues, they said, yeah, your opinion, your channel, say whatever you want. You know, we just want you to try them, which I do appreciate. So thank you for sending it to me, House, House of Siage. Now, there are, I don't know how many are here. One, let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I am not going to talk about all of them. Honestly, this is too many. I've selected four that really stood out to me, that made an impression on me. And these are the ones that I want to share with you. These are not new, you know, but they're new to me and many of them are quite hyped up. So I'm going to tell you what I think about them. Now, just two words about this entire collection, something that I noticed. Overall, I have to say, all of these are very feminine and very pretty and mostly mass appealing. I think these are not super complex and many people would enjoy many of these fragrances. So that's my overall impression of this signature collection. Now, like I said, I'm not going to talk about all of them. I'm going to talk about four standouts for me and their standouts for various reasons. Now, before I do that, I do want to mention that House of Siage shared a discount code with me and an affiliate link, which I'm leaving in the description. Please feel free to use it or not use it as you like. I'm just sharing information with you. Now, I'm going to talk about these in no particular order. And um, the names are challenging for me because I don't know how to pronounce them correctly. So please forgive me if I mispronounce. But the first one I'm going to talk about is Hots Bijou. Hopefully it's somewhere close to what I said. Now, as always, let's start with the notes because these are new to me fragrances. We have mango, blackcurrant, grapefruit, cane carunde, no idea what that is, some kind of flower, iris, heliotrope, vanilla, amber, and cedar. And this really smells how the notes would suggest. It's very fruity, 
fresh. I do get black currant, probably a lot more than mango. I do get some citruses, maybe slight floral nuances, a little bit of amber, and that's basically it. It is this happy, fruity, slightly floral, but mostly fruity type of scent. It does, in a deep dry down, it does become slightly, very slightly shampoo-y. Like it's not soap, but it's a little bit of shampoo or body wash type of vibe in a very light type of way, but it is there a little bit. But overall, the fragrance is very pretty, very feminine, very mass appealing. I think it's very pretty. Is it something unique and extraordinary? No, it's not. But is it pretty? Yes, it is. As always, uh, because I always share with you, is it full bottle worthy to me? I don't think to me it is because I have a lot of fruity, summery types of scents. So for me, I don't think I need a full bottle of this, but it's a pretty scent. Now, next I have a scent that surprised me because I haven't really heard a lot of people talk about this one. Like the other three that I'm going to mention, they're definitely popular. A lot of people talk about them and love them. This one, I don't know, I haven't heard a lot of people talk about and so it really surprised me. The scent that I'm talking about is Holiday. Now, the notes in here are blood orange, mandarin orange, peach, rose, jasmine, cedar, and vetiver. So again, you can see the notes are pretty simple. The fragrance is again pretty simple, but very, very pretty. This one is so juicy. There's something very juicy about it. Like I do get these oranges. They're super juicy, super sweet. And then a little bit of peach. Maybe it's not necessarily peach that I get, but some kind of additional fruitiness. Not really floral to me. And if I had to guess, I would say maybe there's a little bit of sweetness, like there's a little bit of vanilla. The notes don't, don't say that, but I almost feel like there is a little bit of vanilla or maybe the oranges are so juicy and so sweet that, that I get the feeling that some other sweetness is added to this. So, so pretty. Again, very mass appealing. You will see that me describing these in a similar way because that's honestly how I felt about the entire collection. Like I mentioned at the beginning, they are very feminine, pretty, mass appealing. Majority of them. Yeah, that's how it smells. It's a very fruity, sweet, happy, summery type of scent. Really surprised me. I really, really like this one. This one, I'm kind of on the fence. Do I, is it full bottle worthy to me or not? Like in a way, I get it. These fragrances are very expensive, you know, uh, and this is kind of uncomplicated um, fragrance, you know. Uh, at the same time, I really, really love it. Like the juiciness and the sweetness of it really appeals to me. So, this one, I am undecided if it is full bottle worthy or not. I need to test it a little bit further. Now, the remaining two that I'm going to talk about are mm, probably my top two. Even though I said at the beginning, these are in no particular order, but in all honesty, yeah, the last two are my top two. Now, next one I'm going to talk about is Benevolence. And by the way, I don't think any of these are going to come as surprises, honestly. So, benevolence. The notes are bitter almond, anise, bergamot, orange blossom, jasmine, lavender, sugar, vanilla, and musk. What does this one smell like? Well, this scent profile is very easy to describe. This is very similar to the scent profile of fragrances like Killian Love, Memo Sintra, and a number of others that we have. So, is it original? No, let's be honest, it is not. Is it beautiful? Yes, it is. I love this scent profile. And so to me, this fragrance appeals very much. Now, how would I compare it to the other ones? Well, it's not quite as sugary sweet as um, Killian Love. It's more, like it's lighter. It's more rounded. It's more elegant and it doesn't have 
green elements that let's say Sintra from Memo has that bother a lot of people. So I almost feel like this is the most round, the most well put together one out of the scent profile, the one that would appeal to majority of the people because like there aren't any elements that really stand out, you know, and maybe overshadow other elements. It's a very round, very well put together fragrance in my opinion. So even though scent profile is not original, but it smells absolutely beautiful. And to me, it's very appealing because I love this scent profile. So would I want to have a full bottle of this one? Yes, I would. I, even though I have Sintra, I actually don't have Kaelian Love. Uh, but yes, I would love to have a full bottle of this one. To me, it is full bottle worthy. And the last one that I'm going to talk about from the house of Siage is Passion de l'Amour. And so let's start with the notes first. We have raspberry, saffron, bergamot, amorous, lily of the valley, oud, vanilla, patchouli, and liatris. Again, I don't know what it is, some kind of flower. Now, this was the biggest surprise for me out of the bunch. This one is the most unique, the most complex, the most niche smelling fragrance out of the 10 that I tested. And it is also probably the least mass appealing out of the bunch because it is complex and there will be, I think there will be many people that will not like it. Why? I think mostly it's because of the note of Oud. Because, you know, Oud is a challenging note. It is challenging for me as well. I typically don't like fragrances that have a strong note of Oud. And let me tell you right away, to my nose, the note of Oud is very strong in this fragrance. It is. It's very strong. I also get raspberry. I also get a little bit of spiciness from saffron. Um, Lily of the Valley, not really. Maybe a little bit of amorous. To me, amorous has a bit of, I don't know, almost citrusy nature to it. A little bit of vanilla because it does have some sweetness. But oud is very, very strong. Now, it is not skanky. It is not... It doesn't smell bad, but it is very strong. And that is why I think it will not appeal to many people. And surprisingly, I find something so sexy in this fragrance. I don't know why. It surprises me. The oud, it seems like there's too much oud. Like it should not appeal to me. And yet it appeals to me. Like this is like an amazing like going out fragrance, like a really romantic date type of fragrance, like going to, I don't know, a rock concert type of fragrance. Like there's something super sexy about it, despite the strength of the oud or maybe because of the strength of the oud. Yeah, it has a real edge to it. And this oud together with some sweetness and together with some raspberry, it it's beautiful, it's strong, it's powerful, it's not an easy reach, it's not a daytime fragrance, but it is beautiful. There's something about this fragrance that really caught my attention. So this one is also a full bottle worthy to me. I really, really enjoyed this one. Okay, so now let's move on to the other fragrances that I wanted to talk to you about. Like I said at the beginning, my major focus for this video are the two houses, the Soradora and House of Siage. We've talked about House of Siage. Soradora is still to come. But in between the two houses, I want to squeeze in one more fragrance from a different house. House that, again, I talked about uh, in a previous testing video or maybe even in several videos. And there was one fragrance from this house that I always wanted to try and could get, couldn't get my hands on. I finally got it. And so let's talk about it. This is Van Ecstasy from uh, Lorenzo Pasalia. Now, the notes in here. Oh my God, this is like... This is like vanilla heaven, really. I have to read you each vanilla note because there are so many. We have 
bourbon vanilla, Madagascar vanilla, Tahitian vanilla, black vanilla husk. This is just the top notes. Then in the middle, we have vanilla, caramel, white flowers. In the base, we have vanilla pod, black vanilla, tonka bean, and oud. Like, my God, is there any other vanilla out there? It feels like this is complete vanilla overload. What does it smell like? Well, <clears throat> first of all, I expected the scent to be much stronger. My God, after putting so many vanillas in here, it has to be stronger. It's not super strong. It's not super weak, but it's somewhere in the middle. And what does it smell like? Well, it smells like vanilla. This is a vanilla scent. It smells like vanilla. Mm, it smells like a number of other vanilla fragrances like Vanille Chanel, for example, from Epico, very similar. There are a lot of similar fragrances that smell like this. Despite having all these different types of vanilla in the notes, at the end of the day, it's a simple vanilla scent. It smells like sweet vanilla. If you're looking for something like that, well, yes, you might love it. I mean, it's a pleasant scent, don't get me wrong, it smells really good. But do I need it? No, absolutely not. I don't need it in my collection. Straight up vanilla, no, that's just not something that I'm looking for. That's not something that I need. So it smells nice. It's not as strong as I would like it to be. And because it's absolutely redundant in my collection, it's a no for me. Okay, now finally, let's go to the house of Sora Dora. I wanted to test this house for so long. I mean, people rave about these fragrances. And finally, finally, I got to test them. I have good ones. I have probably their, what I would perceive as their most popular scent, and I have two of their newest scents. So let's start with Mandorle. Of course, I mean, everyone seems to love this scent. Everyone raves about it. I was so excited to test it. So the notes in here are suede, rum, tonka bean, caramel, vanilla, heliotrope, cashmere wood, cacao, woodsy notes and musk notes look great they look right up my alley what does it smell like it smells fantastic let's start with that it smells really really good people that are raving about it are absolutely correct it's a beautiful beautiful scent what the notes say is basically what it smells like it's sweet it's a little bit spicy it's a little bit boozy it has a touch of suede running through this scent but it's so, so light. Um, it's just delicious. It's absolutely delicious. Even feels like maybe there's a, a little bit of cherry somewhere in there. I don't know. Maybe a little bit. Scent is absolutely beautiful. It has good performance. It has good projection. Nothing bad to say about it. However, let's be honest. Is this scent profile original. Is this scent in general original? Absolutely not. We have so many scents that smell like this. This is very, very comparable to Ojan from Parfums de Marly, from Fera from Bricord, from uh, Soma from Noeme, from uh, Nightfall Patchouli from Carolina Herrera, and I'm sure there are more. So scent is very similar to those scents. It's gorgeous, but it's not unique. And so I am completely torn on this one because I love the way it smells. Love, love, love. There's no question about it. But do I need it? Because I have quite a few of the ones that I mentioned. I feel like I don't. I feel like it will be redundant in my collection. So I am again kind of undecided about this one. If you don't have, if you, the scents that I mentioned, or if you don't feel like this scent is redundant in your collection, I would 100% recommend it, 100%. But for me personally, I don't know. I don't know. I need to think about it more. I need to test it more. So the decision is up in the air, but the scent is beautiful, okay? Next, let's go to one of their new releases, which is Mallow. Now, this one has interesting notes. Raspberry, vanilla, pink pepper, heliotrope, orange blossom, almond, violet, uh, black musk, and amber. I really didn't know what I was going to think about this one because kind of 
partially I like the notes, partially I'm not sure about the notes. Uh, and this one pleasantly surprised me. I actually like it a lot more than I thought I would. Overall, the dominant part of the scent for me is the powderiness. I get a lot of that. So because there is heliotrope and violet and almond, I feel like all of these notes contribute to that. So the scent is kind of sweet and powdery and there is a little bit of raspberry or rather there is a little bit of slightly sour fruitiness in here that actually plays very nicely with powderiness. I feel like if it was just that sweet, very sweet powderiness, which is what I'm getting, I would not enjoy it as much, but it's that um, slightly sour fruitiness added to it that really makes the scent smell much better to me. It's very pleasant, very pleasant, very interesting. Oh, I really love it when I smell it from the blotter. It, again, I'm a little bit undecided with this one because I really like it. At the same time, I realize that this is not 100% my scent profile. You know, like I don't reach uh, for powdery scents very often. This kind of, I have to be in the mood. So is it worth it for me to have a full bottle? Mm, I'm not sure. I think what I'm going to do is play with the decant because I actually got a decant of this one play with it more, use it more, see how I feel about it. Am I gravitating towards it? Do I want to use it, you know? And if I see that I do, when I start using it up, I might get a full bottle. And if it's something that I just kind of want to play with once in a while, then they'll tell me that I don't need the full bottle. And finally, we're getting to the scent that piques my interest more than any other. That is Jenny. I don't know, I'm gonna call it Jenny, but I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. The notes in here, oh my God, when I saw the notes, I thought, whoo, this is for me, this scent is made for me. We have baked apple, puff pastry, cinnamon, caramel, almond, vanilla, apricot, nutty notes, musk, peach, osmanthus, plum. How good do these notes sound? I thought this will be this will be a gourmand out of this world. And this one smells really nice. But I found it a bit disappointing, if I'm being completely honest. The notes suggest that this should be such a good, delicious gourmand, and it's just a little weak compared to the notes. Like, what am I getting? Yes, I'm getting baked apple, like some kind of apple pastry with a little bit of cinnamon, definitely nutty notes, and definitely apricots. Can't really say that almonds I'm getting in here, um, or like, well, maybe it's apricots and plums and osmanthus. I feel like they all smell kind of similar. So yes, some kind of fruits like that. Yes, there is a little bit of that mixing with the apple. Uh, it's almost like you cut up an apple and you cut up all of these, you know, plums or apricots, whatever. You mix them together and put them in a puff pastry and that's what you made. It's not super sweet. Like there's vanilla and caramel. The sweetness is very light. It's kind of overall scent is airy. It's not as dense as I thought it would be. Yeah, it's a little bit light in my opinion. So... Scent profile is very pretty. It's very appealing to me, but I want the scent to give me more. I want it to be deeper, denser, stronger. And so for that reason, I think my decision on this one is a no. It's a nice scent. It's really nice, but it's not for me. Like I said, I'm just missing the depth and the strength in this scent, even though the actual scent profile is really, really nice. But yeah, overall, as you can see in this one, um, part two was quite positive because I really enjoyed a lot of the fragrances that I talked about, whereas um, part one uh, of testing wasn't <laughs> as positive. You know, that's just how it works out. I will always give you my honest opinions. So that's it for testing for now. I'm done for a while. Uh, please let me know if you've tried any of these fragrances, what are your thoughts, and if you have any recommendations of any new fragrances that I need to test out. 
Thank you for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to give me a thumbs up, to subscribe and to comment, and I will see you soon in the next one. Bye.